Hello and welcome back to Between Two Stethoscopes, your source for the physician assistant life from pre-PA to PAC. I'm Bree Marks, your host. There's long been a deep connection between the military and the medical field. In fact, many of the technologies and techniques that we utilize every day as clinicians were both innovated and refined within the military. And of course, our own physician assistant profession has its roots in ex-Navy corpsmen who wanted to utilize their skills to bridge the gap in civilian healthcare. My guest today is someone that has made the transition between active duty military and practicing physician assistant. Ray Rivera is a former U.S. Marine Sergeant who is now a practicing PA in pulmonology. So Ray, thank you so much for being with me today. It's really an honor to have you here. Thanks for having me. So I'm going to just ask you to introduce yourself and explain your role in the service. Yep. So I'm Ray Rivera. I'm a physician assistant. Um, um, as Bree said, I'm a uh, former U.S. Marine Corps Sergeant. Um, I served from 1998 to 2002 um, and actually had nothing to do with the medical field whatsoever when I was in the mm -hmm. Marines. Um, the Marine Corps itself actually doesn't have a medical branch. Mm -hmm. um, we use, we utilize the Navy corpsmen um, who are attached to our Marine units to provide mm -hmm. healthcare for us. Um, so, you know, just as you know, the corpsmen have deep roots in the physician assistant field. I have, I have a deep love for the, for yeah. the corpsmen. They're really uh, important to us. Absolutely. Yep. And can you just tell us a little bit about your career as a PA? Like, what have what have you been doing since um, since you became practicing? Sure. So um, I became a PA in August of 2008, and pretty much uh, started out my career in the emergency medicine field. So. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Probably total time I did emergency medicine for about four and a half years between adult and pediatric emergency medicine. Um, I did about two and a half years in a specialized burn center critical care unit. Um, uh, you know, specializing in all the all the fields and pertinent things with burn. Mm -hmm. um, and then for about the last four years, I have been uh, both in critical care primarily, and as of September now, I'm, I'm full time pulmonology and part time critical care. Got it. And when did you first consider a transition into medicine? So uh, the first time I considered transitioning into medicine was actually already I had already been out of school. Um, or, sorry, I was already out of the Marine Corps mm -hmm. and I had already started school. Um, so I kind of went into school just kind of winging it, not really knowing what okay. I wanted to do. Um, started out community college like a lib arts major, um, just figuring I'd probably get a lot of my prerequisites out of the way, you know, until I figured out what I wanted to do. And it probably wasn't until my first year or so um, in community college that I figured out I wanted to go into the medical track. Mm -hmm. Even at that, I was still figuring it out. So what made you finally choose PA as the, as the career path that you wanted? That's a really good question. Um, so I actually was set to go on a nursing track. Okay. And um, just was not really sure what to do, you know, in the medical field. I knew I enjoyed working with people. I enjoyed helping people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, probably the most accessible thing at that time was the nursing field. Um, so I, I kind of went along with the nursing track um, at the local community college that I was going to. And um, met my introduction to biology professor. Um, and she's a lovely woman. Mm -hmm. Helen Sheerans was her name. She, <laughs> and she's the person who actually really put it in my heart to do something more. Um, you know, I really enjoyed biology, uh, scored very high, and she said, look, you, you need to do something more. She said, you need to go be a doctor. And I, I struggled with that because I was already out of school. I was 20, or out of the Marine Corps, I was 22, and I wasn't looking to spend a lot of time mm -hmm. between, you know, both undergrad, grad, residency, you know, by the time, you know, you get into the working field, I mean, I'm going to be like almost middle-aged. <laughs> so right. I decided to um, look into something else and that's where I found the physician assistant field. Okay, great. And um, was it difficult for you to get in to be able to pay for all of your classes, like having, you know, gone from, from making a great salary in the Marine Corps into going into the, mm -hmm. the student world? 
Yeah, so it, it, it was difficult, um, probably for a few reasons, because um, the Marine Corps, and that's, I mean, anybody who works in the military, that's, <laughs> that's the running joke. They say, like, every paycheck's a fortune. It's not really. <laughs> it kind of feels like it, though, because, uh, you know, you get your paycheck, and it's all yours. You don't have mm -hmm. to pay for housing. You don't have to pay for food. A lot of transportation is covered. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the end of the day, obviously civilian life is very different. Mm -hmm. We have to pay for all that ourselves. Um, so it, 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 it was tough in the sense that I had to reorganize my mind to figure out, okay, how am I going to do all of this on, you know, whatever I have left? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, absolutely. And then did you utilize the GI Bill? Did you have any help from anybody? Um, so I did. So the GI Bill was probably the biggest asset that helped me through school. Um, when, when I went into the Marine Corps, I knew that eventually I was going to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, going into the Marine Corps, it, it was a priority to actually put something aside for school. Um, so it was either in boot camp or shortly thereafter, mm -hmm. you know, you have an opportunity to, to sign up, you know, kind of sign up for the GI Bill. Okay. Um, and that really propelled me to be able to pay for most of my college education. Um, it, 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 it took a bit of planning though, because, you know, at that time, I don't know what it is now, but at that time it was kind of a once and done deal mm -hmm. where you either, you choose to contribute to the GI Bill and they take a little bit of money out of your paycheck, mm -hmm. you know, to sock it away for an exponential bigger paycheck, you know, mm -hmm. when you're in school, you know, for them to help you fund your school. Um, yeah, and so that I decided to do that and it did benefit me very, very much. And were you able to utilize that actually when you were in PA school? Yes, so so basically as soon as you start up, um, as, as soon as you um, start taking college courses or whether mm -hmm. it's a training program, a certificate program, an apprenticeship, mm -hmm. any of those things are applicable and you can use the GI Bill towards that. Um, and basically as soon as you, and most in institutions will have this, they'll have, um, whatever, you know, the office is, I'm not sure if it's a registrar or bursar or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, they have a method of submitting a veter veteran's benefits. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, as soon as you verify that you're enrolled in the courses and you're taking them, um, you know, they submit that to the VA and then you're on your way. Got it. Yeah. Has it ever surprised you that you went from someone that was, you know, an active duty Marine to now, now you're a PA? Yeah, I guess so. Um, you know, I, I, I guess, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of is because there's there's nothing of the like in the Marine Corps. I mean, mm -hmm. you're either, you're a grunt, toting guns, you know, or you're support, you know, mm -hmm. you're heavy equipment, you're, you know, your you're administration, you know, obviously there's artillery and things like that, but there's nothing really in the Marine Corps that I would say gears you towards this. I mean, unless you, you you know, you're working close hand in hand with the corpsmen and you're mm -hmm. seeing what they're doing and that catches your interest aside of that. There's nothing that really kind of pushes you towards this career. So it really was kind of like, uh, oh, all right, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try this over here and really fell in love with it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, for our audience, I can tell you that I've worked with Bray personally and he is an amazing PA. He's one of the oh. smartest PAs that I know. <laughs> Thanks, Bray. So, um, how do you think your military service helped you prepare for, well, for, well, for all, getting your prereqs, going through didactic year, going through clinical year, how did that help you? Uh, for me personally, I would not have been able to do PA school without it. Um, I, I mean, I wasn't a stellar student. Uh, in high school, I really wasn't that prepared to go to college. Um, I actually chose to go into the service because I didn't really have uh, another plan. Mm -hmm. So kind of for lack of better planning, I was like, well, let me just kind of do this. And, you know, I knew that somehow it was going to propel me towards, you know, finding a career path right. somewhere, whether it was a career in the military or somewhere mm -hmm. else. Um, you know, and also kind of giving me a path to be able to get some college education. Um, a lot of people do it 
for that reason. Um, I kind of just did it because I didn't have anything else better to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not become a Marine? I don't have anything yeah, to do today. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, but yeah, like a long way around the question. I, I, I don't know that I would have had the discipline to be mm -hmm. able to, to have gotten through didactic year. Um, you know, the professional year was quite a bit easier in my mind. Um, but the amount of dedication that I needed to complete the courses, especially the prerequisites that mm -hmm. I needed to get in PA school and then the rigorous uh, at like academic didactic year, I would have never done it. Yeah, great. And where did you go to PA school? So I went to DeSales University. I graduated in 2008, so we are fellow alums. Yes, we are. Go to sales, go Bulldogs. <laughs> so as we're wrapping up, right, for those that are active duty now, mm -hmm. um, who are, who, who are um, recently out of the service and are thinking about PA school, what advice would you give to them? Um, so, you know, I mean, it's, it's a big transition on a lot of fronts. So going from, you know, military life, I mean, you're kind of institutionalized, so to speak. I mean, it's a completely different way of life. Um, you know, uh, depending on how you live, some people live paycheck to paycheck. Some people, you know, again, like housing is provided, mm -hmm. you know, food is provided, things like that. Um, so I think probably the first thing is gearing yourself towards the idea that this is not how life is going to be anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and especially going from, you know, being in the military and then figuring out, all right, I'm going to go to school, you know, so for me, I'm like, all right, how am I going to go to school and, you know, and live and do all of these things? I mean, thankfully, in my case, you know, I came back to college in my hometown, mm -hmm. um, you know, my parents, they, they, Thankfully, they brought me in, took them under their <laughs> wing. Um, but I, I was able to utilize the GI Bill to cover college costs, you know, mm -hmm. even some of my own expenses, pay for my car payment, my, mm -hmm. my insurance, and things like that. Um, you know, so unless there's, you know, some people are getting out, again, I was single, um, so I didn't have anybody else to depend on. Mm -hmm. You know, people are coming out of the military with families, you know, maybe a spouse is working, so there's some kind of contingency plan there, you know, for how somebody might go about doing this and, and going into PA school. Um, you know, but for some single people out there, I would say, look, you know, you really got to strategize and figure out how am I going to make this GI Bill mm -hmm. go as far as I can for this PA program. Part of my own strategy was really utilizing um, the... Um, community college because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know this but it, when you're in college the amount that they're paying you for the GI Bill whether you're at DeSales University and you're paying I don't remember what we paid but it was an un <laughs> uh, it was a lot so or you're at community college they're paying you the same amount uh -huh. so I remember being in community college and the GI Bill you know uh, you know for a semester there uh, you know it was paying me, I forget, maybe three, four grand, and I paid like one, uh, and this was per month, by the way, yeah. whereas community college is $2,000 a semester. Right. Right. So so for me, I'm like, okay, I'm socking all this away mm -hmm. and then going to dump it back into education. You know, meanwhile, also you can utilize it to pay for your car payments and so on and so forth. So when they give it to you, it's yours. Right. You have to figure out what to do with it. So strategically, um, exactly. So strategic planning is is probably the biggest thing, and having a plan about what you're going to do with that, how to utilize it, and don't let it, you know, make its way out the door before it's, <laughs> before it's in your pocket. Do you feel like you made the right choice? Are you happy you became a PA? I absolutely am. I mean, I I so there's so many things out there that you hear so many times that you know, especially nowadays, people are saying, you know, well. You know, there used to be this huge focus on college education. Mm -hmm. um, and then now there's been this shift where people are, you know, they come out of college and there's maybe there's not a job for them. Or, you know, employers are looking for what kind of experience do you have? You know, there's people are looking for some kind of skill that you have, mm -hmm. not just an education. Um, 
which as you know can be tough for us coming out of school mm -hmm. um, it is nice that we have on the job training like even through our professional phase so we have yeah. some idea of how to do what we want to do when we get out of here through our rotations a critical right. year right exactly um, you know but the, the other really neat thing is that like through the last ten and a half years I've gained skills from emergency medicine and burn surgery, critical care, carried them through to critical care and even into pulmonology mm -hmm. that, um, you know, it's, you know, they're all my skills now. That's right. You know, yours forever. Exactly. Um, so I, I don't know of a profession that you can do so many different things. You know, if you want to do go to family practice tomorrow, you could. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the beauty of our profession. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Ray, thank you so much for talking with me today. Yeah. Thank you for your service. It was really an honor Absolutely. to speak with you. You too. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So if you like this content, please like and subscribe, especially if you're on YouTube. You can also follow me for more daily updates and some um, neuro exam tips and tricks um, at Between Two Stethoscopes on Instagram and at Between Two Stethoscopes on Facebook. So I'll be back with a new interview soon. Thank you. All right.